Hey guys, it's really late at night, but um, I've got a few things to tell you. So, as you can tell by the video title, I was fired. <laughs> and I'm just going to talk you through how this came about and, I mean, what's going to happen next. The other night, we were having a conversation. I feel like this was the catalyst for it. I don't even know if it was or not, but I just have a very big feeling. Obviously got onto a discussion about feminism, didn't we? The dad came back. Should we call him Dave? Dave came back from work. It was a really hot day. He took off his shirt and I was like, oh, wish I could do that. But obviously I'm a woman, so I can't otherwise I'd get arrested. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, the mom will call her Stephanie. Stephanie was like, yeah, quality, right? Wait, what if I called them? Dave and Stephanie. Okay. And I was like, damn right, you get my vibe. So yeah, anyway. And then I was like, oh, actually, to be fair, I wouldn't have wanted to take my top off anyway because I've been harassed five times today and that was with my top on, so. And they were like, what? Like, what's happened? I always tell them because I just like telling people these things because it makes me feel, like, comforted. Stephanie always says to me, like, oh, please call me if you're ever in a situation where, like, you feel in danger and stuff. And, like, that makes me feel safer. So it's, like, nice to confide in them and stuff. And, like, as well, like, why would I filter my thoughts around them if they're meant to be, like, my family for this year? So I just told them, like, what happened to me during the day. And Dave was like oh but it's like nice for men to say those kind of things and like to compliment you and stuff and I was like yeah but it makes you feel unsafe and he was like yeah but it's not intended to like it's not meant to be a nice thing like you should feel good about men saying those things and I was like I was like yeah but I don't and like often times like when that happens it escalates and women get like hurt and abducted and like horrible things happen and it and it just doesn't make me feel safe because men scare me and uh, and he was like yeah but women do that to men as well and i was like have you ever seriously felt unsafe when a woman says that you look hot or like looks at you like that and he was like no and i was like well there you fucking go then fast forward we started talking about feminism but more in detail and then i was like oh yeah but like obviously like i like to talk about feminism a lot like i talk about it with my friends a lot and they're like oh what do your friends think and stuff and i'm like oh yeah we just think like kill all men and stuff and they're like what kill all men and i was like yeah like if there was a but button that said like kill all men like i'd press it and she was like what okay yeah maybe here I, I should have filtered my thoughts and stuff because it's like obviously i don't think that i've become desensitized to saying that like i just say it too much and it is not okay i understand and i shouldn't have said it around them like i do know and i wouldn't do it again but i have just become desensitized to it oh god and i'll say yeah yeah but it's like less about hating men and it's more about empowering women and like making sure women's voices are heard and they were like oh okay and then i was like yeah i just really like having conversations like this um and just like learning about my privilege and like learning about like issues in the world like um social issues like for example i'm reading a book currently and like going through and doing exercises on, on a book called me and white supremacy and they were like me and what and i was like white supremacy <laughs> And they were like, oh, okay, so, like, what do you do? And I was like, oh, so, for example, like, um, the one that I just did was, like, what kind of unearned privileges do I have that have made me feel, like, secure in my life and, like, what's almost, like, protected me from bad things happening that I've taken for granted and not realised and stuff. And I just, like, explained a bit about that, like, certain situations. And they were like, yeah, but it's better now, isn't it? Like, it's not, we're not really, like... Like, there is equality now. And I was like, no, there's not. I was like, even between men and women, there's still a wage gap. And that's even more heightened for people of colour, like, specifically women of colour and black women. And, uh, 
and they were like well that's not true and uh, and the the dad was like um yeah i work in a bank and like we it's better to hire women because like um because like we almost like tick a box and stuff and like to hire like a black woman is like even better and i was like and also yeah that's not a bad thing though it's just like positive discrimination because it's like you know that you're hiring them because they're different and they're marginalized but then you're giving them jobs you're giving them money good that you're aware that you're doing that and it's not an issue because you're still giving them those things and it's like if you didn't hire that person like if you didn't hire that black woman you'd probably hire a white man wouldn't you so it's obviously better than that and he was like yeah i guess and they were like yeah but if we went to like a country where like we were a minority <sighs> say for example india and i was like yeah the, the re you have to check in why the reasons you might feel unsafe like is it because we've ta we've been taught through systems like the policing system that like black people and people of color are criminals because they're incarcerated at a much higher rate um is it because of their gender that you'd feel unsafe because obviously that comes into play like men are oppressive over women regardless of their race so i was just like questioning why we why that might be that we might feel unsafe in those situations and kind of like asking them to break that down further than just you wouldn't feel safe in that country or whatever or around these people i was asking them like why nothing like really big happened in that conversation but it's just like they were almost like arguing against the fact that like i was saying we aren't equal as women or people of color specifically black people aren't equal and it's like what are you arguing about i think they're trying to be racist or to be like not not even sexist but like i don't think they're trying to be like that i just think they're wrapped inside their own privilege and in their own bubble and it's like i said a few things that i shouldn't have that would probably make them question me as a person because obviously they don't want me to be talking to their children about like hating men and stuff and turning it into some kind of cult which they probably think I'm part of. It was a bit of like a weird conversation that left things a little bit awkward because you know when you have political conversations and it's like a bit, bit like, I don't know, it's just a bit weird. So yeah, like that happened. Next evening, like things were still a bit tense, a bit awkward. She came into my room. Prior to this, um, I I have to clean the whole house and I have to clean around a lot. Like she she gave me a whole list of chores to do and it's more than just the girls' things, like the little girls I look after. And so the mom came into my room and she was like, oh, like you haven't done this properly. And I was like, oh i just have like a question about this because i'd asked a few of my friends about it who were also au pairs and i was like i don't actually think i'm meant to be cleaning and doing this much housework especially when it's not in my hours that i'm meant to be working it wasn't really in my contract and stuff it just said like do a little bit of light like housework in the contract i understand that i'd have to help out and stuff and i'm more than happy to do like certain things but it's like i'm not gonna spend hours doing the entire housework like literally everything so i just like asked a question i was like i i'm just like a little bit confused because i didn't think i'd have to do this much housework like a lot of my friends don't do this much and um I didn't like know that it was in the contract and stuff to do all of this and so like if it is I, I'm fine to do it I just need it to be included in my hours and I need it to be like clear for me and she just got really really angry at me and it was like I think she almost thought I was saying like you're um abusing your power and like you're making me do all of this stuff and it's like i'm not being paid for it and everything and it's like i wasn't saying that at all i was simply questioning it and i don't have a problem with the family at all like i, f I feel really comfortable here they're really really lovely i think they're quite dramatic almost in how they respond to things and it's like if they don't get what they want or what they want to hear it's like no do you know what I mean? That's like a bit of a problem because I'm not someone who likes to get angry or like hurtful or hateful in any way. So when people respond to me like that, it's massively a red flag to me because I 
I'm not like that at all. Especially now more than ever, I'm like pretty, pretty fucking zen. <laughs> and so she was like, we're gonna increase your hours. Like if you don't wanna do this housework, I'm gonna make you do even more work. You're gonna be working 30 hours a week and we'll see what you think then. And um, we're gonna go through the contract tomorrow night with the dad, Dave. <laughs> and, um, and we're all gonna sit down and talk about this. And I was like, fuck me i was like oh no like what's gonna happen like i don't want my hours to increase anymore and stuff like i didn't even think that's possible and um anyway so the next evening like we didn't speak the whole of the next day like the tension was astronomical I had dinner she was sat in here um i came in here and i was like um i figured it all out like i understand what i have to do i just wasn't sure yesterday but i've gone through like um the piece of paper that you gave me i've gone through the contract and like your au pair world profile and i do understand what i have to do and i'm fine to do it because i was at this point i was just like i don't want any more confrontation i don't want them to up my hours i'm just gonna say that everything's fine and um and she was like, she was like, no, no, you've disrespected me completely. You're very clever. Like you only ask for what you want and you say that you're confused about this when you could have asked me sooner. And yet you're not scared to ask me like to do stuff for you. And I was like, no, it's not like that at all. Um, I was just confused, but I figured it out and it's fine. Like I'm more than happy to do that. Like it is my job. And she was like, yeah, yeah, well, you've just broken the relationship, so we'll talk about it when the dad gets home. So Dave got home a few minutes later. So Dave and Stephanie sat on the sofa. And I really hope there's not like an au pair family with parents called Dave and Stephanie that you're gonna be. That's not their names. Just want to clear that up. They sat down on the sofa, I was stood up, and they basically just started like ripping into my personality and being like you've got so much attitude at such a young age and we don't appreciate that it's not natural how you um how you talk and how you hang out with the kids and how you behave like we find it very weird and i was like also what like this is new to me completely like they've never said anything about me around the children or like how i behaved before i was just like genuinely so baffled and i was just trying to like backpedal and be like I was just confused about like, the cleaning thing, but it's fine, like I don't mind, it's okay, like everything's fine. And they just like, they were like, do you even like our children? And I was like, yeah, of course I do. And they were like, yeah, we don't think so. Um, you've ruined the relationship. This is very like generalizing everything that we discussed because this happened for a long time, this conversation did. They were just saying a lot of things that it's like, they'd obviously been thinking and having a lot of doubts about me before, but they hadn't said anything. And so like it was all coming out now and I felt like a bit overwhelmed and I, I'd had like quite a bad week anyway um, just because of what's going on in my personal life and so like I just got really overwhelmed I like shed a couple of tears like when I say a couple like genuinely a couple but I was just like I have had a really difficult week and so like I think maybe that was like interfering with my work and i'm really sorry about that like i'm gonna do better and it'll be fine and they were like no no you're not gonna do better because there's no like there's no moving forward that's what the dad was saying and then um stephanie was like well we'll talk about it we'll talk about it and so anyway i got the impression that maybe stephanie like was willing to make it work and stuff but dave wasn't willing to make it work like he doesn't want me and so i was like i wonder what's gonna happen when they talk about this and so we kind of ended the conversation like we're gonna talk about this tonight and we'll let you know tomorrow so yeah anyway next day comes next morning walk into the kitchen you're fired <sighs> so yeah currently i have nowhere to go she wanted me to leave this weekend. She said, you have to get out um, of the house. We'll pay for your train ticket home. And I was like, no, no, like, is there any way I can stay for another week? So um, I'm allowed to stay for another week um, just while I find a family. So yeah. Fucking hope 
what I find on. But yeah, I'm gonna be looking like I've looked all day on Opal World. A lot of my absolutely wonderful, amazing friends who I've met here so far, like Opal friends, have said like, you're more than welcome to stay at my house if you need to. Um, like we're here for you. We're gonna keep looking for families for you as well, and we'll let you know if we see anything. And loads of people have already sent me families, and I just feel really grateful for like the support system I've already got here. Like I've been here a couple of weeks, like literally two weeks. Like <sighs> I actually love it. A lot's changing for me, and it's quite overwhelming. Not just in Paris, but a lot. A lot of stuff in my life is just completely shifting so it's like a very weird time for me and a very weird phase so i'm just trying to take care of myself and also since i've got my period i'm feeling very ill so not not coronavirus though i'm just i just have a cold <laughs> i just have a snotty nose don't worry but it's like uncomfortable, you know? And I think it's a symptom of change and of stress for that change. So I'm just gonna see what happens and I'll keep you updated. And hopefully I don't end up homeless on the streets of Paris. A quick PSA, I'm not stressed because I trust the universe and I genuinely think everything in life is really happening for a reason. I think they obviously had like some doubts about me. Now I'm looking back, I had um, like a few things with them, like we didn't align with each other in the best way and I genuinely think when I find a family everything will like fit more into place and so I'm not stressed because I know that something is working for me in order to give me something better. Like, I know something better is coming. And I know that, and I, I know and I trust and surrender to that. So that's why I want to say I'm very fucking chilled. Because I just think it's going to work out and it's going to be beautiful. Hi guys, so it's been a few days since I've updated you, so I just want to let you know how I'm getting on. Basically, stress is over. I was like on Opal World like all that day when I updated you. And then the next day, I like scheduled a meeting and a call with a family, so I called them. And then now, I've just got back. It's all confirmed with this family. I went to see their house. After the call, we were like, oh, do you want to like meet each other in person? So I went to their house. It's beautiful like the most beautiful house i've ever seen they're gonna pick me up in a few days and i'm safe so i'm really happy and relieved that i found a family because i was just a bit worried like if i didn't find one and like having to move my stuff like all of my bags around paris to my friend's houses like that wasn't gonna happen so i'm really thankful that i found this family and they just seem so lovely so chilled which I left. They actually didn't want an au pair until like the middle of October. And I was like, yeah, but I'm actually gonna be stranded otherwise. <laughs> and they were like, oh, okay, like you can move in sooner. You'll just stay in like the playroom. And I was like, okay. So I'm grateful for a space. Like I don't care where it is. Like I'm moving into the playroom of this house. So, and it's still gorgeous because the whole house is lovely. Hi guys, so I've just moved in. I just wanted to like update you on my moving day. I was going to finish the video there, but um, I have some sweet, sweet tea for you. So this morning I woke up kind of late and I like stayed in bed for ages because I like went out last night and so I was feeling a bit tired and I got a text from my old au pair mom and she said you need to leave before three because we're going to go out then you need to give the key back so I just text my new au pair mom and I was like anyway you could pick me up before three because she was going to come three to four so it was a bit cheeky of my old one to be like oh um, you need to sort it out for a different time now when we'd agreed that that was fine so I thought she was going to come just before three so I got out of bed at 11 I showered I was doing my makeup I get a call at um quarter to 12 saying oh I'm just about to leave now like she's just about to leave to pick me up <laughs> so I was like like I'm not ready like at this point I just finished doing my makeup and I hadn't packed I hadn't cleaned the room like I wasn't ready and I was like fuck 
and and it only takes 25 minutes for her to get to like my old house so I was like what do you mean like I have 25 minutes to be out of this house I like rushed to get ready like I was like throwing everything in my suitcase like I was doing everything like really efficiently actually like I'm really proud of myself because I packed very fast I had like literally like five minutes to clean the room and just to like make sure everything was like okay i went upstairs i like brought a few of my bags upstairs they came into the room like everyone like the whole family came into the room and they were like the dad went like this on the floor and he was like it's not clean enough like what's this you haven't cleaned the room and i was like yeah i, I just vacuumed it like i just vacuumed it and he was like, what's this then? And literally like pulled a tiny bit of fluff on the floor. Like when I say a tiny bit, like I literally mean like a little bit of fluff on the floor. And I was like, I've just vacuumed. And he was like, you haven't done it good enough. And I was like, no, what do you mean? Then he went into the bathroom. He lifted up the toilet. He was like, it's not clean properly. He took away the bin. He was like, it's not clean properly on the wall. The wall, the wall isn't clean what do you mean the wall isn't clean he was like you haven't cleaned the shower properly like i needed to clean the shower head apparently i was like what the fuck like i literally have to leave like before i went to get them like as soon as i finished packing everything my new mom like <laughs> my new mom my new repair mom called me and she was like oh i'm i'm outside now like i'm just driving up to the house but like i'm a few houses down but i'm just gonna try and get closer to you and um and I was like, oh, okay, perfect. So she was outside the house. And then they came down and told me that it wasn't good enough. But not only did he say this, he said, I'm not paying you because you haven't cleaned your room, like I said. And on top of that, I asked you to clean all downstairs and you haven't. And I was like, what? I was like, all downstairs. I was like, you didn't say that. And he was like, I told you yesterday. Like, I'm not being funny, he genuinely did not tell me that. Like, he said to clean my room, and I was like, yeah, of course I'll clean my room. Apparently I didn't clean my room good enough, but equally, I didn't clear the whole bottom floor. Like, what do you mean? When she's outside the house, like, they knew this. And I was like, and I was like, okay, I'll just do it now if you're not going to fucking pay me. And he was like, no, 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 I'll do it. I'm just not going to pay you. And I was like, no, no, I'll clean, I'll clean. And he was like, no, don't worry about it. Of course, if I'm not gonna get paid for a week's work, I'm going to clean the room a little bit more. So I quickly vacuumed everything. I cleaned specifically in the areas that he told me that weren't good enough. And then I like finished. I was literally like sweating. Like the, at this point, he'd been waiting outside for like 15 minutes. And she needed to go and pick her daughter up, which is why she had to like, I had to go out the house when she got there but I was late. I just like came upstairs and it was so weird. Like everyone was like silent. And I was like, oh, I finished. And, uh, and they were like, okay, like, bye. And I was like, like, what do you mean bye? Like the girls came up to me and they were like, just like went like that. And I was like, no, this is really weird. And then, um, and I was like, I cleaned downstairs, like, can you go and check? Like, I need you to make sure it's okay. And, um, and he was like, I'll check later. So, like, I just feel like I'm not even going to get paid for the work that I've done this week, even though cleaning isn't my job. And, uh, I'm actually fuming because I just feel like they're not even going to pay me, but we'll see. We'll see. I can't do anything about it if they don't, but, like, what the fuck, man? So yeah anyway when i got into the car like i came outside i put all my things in the car like i literally had so many bags like i literally was barely being able to carry them and they didn't even care like they literally were like oh well and i was like fucking bye bad to fail futre old dad came out and he like oh because he opened the gates for me and he said like he introduced himself to her but obviously he's a moody cunt. I got in the car and she was like, he didn't seem very nice. And I was like, yeah, I know, he's horrible. And then I explained why I was late, like as if they made me like clean the whole fucking bottom floor just so I could get my week's pay. What do you, what do you mean? And as well, 
not only that, but when I filmed the first part of this video, I was babysitting for them. So imagine they don't pay me when I babysat until quarter past one in the morning for them. I'm at this house now. The family are lovely. The children are so cute. But I will keep you updated, of course, because we all know how things can change. I've got a good feeling. I do want to film like a room tour and stuff, but the room, like my room isn't ready. The one that I'll actually be staying in this year. I'm just staying in this room for two weeks because they've got work going on in the house. So like the parents are sleeping in my room currently while they have work done to their room. So when that's all finished in two weeks, I'll be able to move into my room. And how cute is this? I asked her like if when I come back, it after the October holidays, like when I go back home for a couple of weeks, if like I can bring my candles and stuff because the last fe family didn't want me to burn candles. She was like, no, that's fine. She was like, why, why do you want candles and stuff? And I was like, oh, I'm spiritual. She was like, oh, what does that mean? And I like explained like the rituals that I do and stuff. And she was like, oh, okay. Like, is that normal? <laughs> and I was like, I mean, it's not like really common. But like, yeah, quite a few people do it. Um, and she was like, I've never heard of it before. Like, that's, that's cool. And I was like, uh, and I was like, yeah, like, I hope it doesn't like scare you because I guess it can come across like a little bit, like, bit kind of crazy, really. Um, when I just explain it like so simply. And yeah, she was like, she was like, yeah, but don't worry, it doesn't scare me. <laughs> and I was like, okay, good. And then she like showed me out all of the windows and it's just like so gorgeous here and I really like it. So I think it's gonna be like a really nice year and I'm really happy. Only problem is the house is really fucking cold. Like really cold, I'm freezing. So I'll keep you updated on how it goes and I'll give you like a room tour and like everything like that when I've properly moved into my own room. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm happy, I'm thriving, and thank you so much for watching this video and witnessing all the drama that I have going on in my life. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you feel inclined to, and happy in talk!